in terms of the other things that all males should do, meaning all males of all ages, um, puberty and beyond, uh, should do, what what are some of those things? So on a daily basis, uh, maybe you could just take us through the arc of a day and um, and push out some of the protocols that you use or the things that you like to see your male patients use in order to try and optimize their hormone status. I'll briefly touch on some of the lifestyle pillars to start. Diet and exercise are the first two. Um, in puberty, sleep is particularly important, of course. Um, but with diet and exercise, uh, throughout a lifespan, you want to not exclude things that are helping you. For example, during puberty, if you're consuming dairy and then all of a sudden you cut out all dairy, dairy can help increase IGF-1 and free IGF-1. And, and just uh, which again is, for our audience, maybe you just mentioned what, IG, what having enough IGF-1 can do for us that's beneficial is? It helps you grow. It uh, helps with uh, genital development, secondary sexual characteristics, and long bone growth. Um, skin growth, hair growth, a host of things. So getting an array of nutrients that include dairy, what other sorts of nutrients are important during development? You want to have adequate vitamin D. Vitamin D helps with testosterone production. It helps, again, with bone mineralization and stature. Um, after an age of about 25, and there's not a strict cutoff, but up to about an age of 25, optimizing your growth hormone and IGF-1 helps with bone density and bone growth. So uh, from the dietary standpoint, you want to have enough free estrogen, not too much when you're growing, but you want to help um, basically stockpile bone to prevent a risk of osteoporosis or thin bones fractures when you're older. Well, someone who broke his left foot five times while in high school. Uh, I can say you know, whatever young people can do to optimize their uh, bone density would be great. That problem seems to have resolved itself over time, but I don't know, back then I was, um, I did a short run as a vegetarian, but I've always been an omnivore. Um, I realize that some of this relates to ethics and food allergies and things of that sort, but would you say that on balance that most people would benefit from eating a combination of you know, quality proteins from animal sources and non-animal sources, fruits, vegetables, and starches. I mean, what do you think, for instance, about people following a pure carnivore or a very uh, pure vegan diet in their 20s and 30s? In their late 20s, it might be a reasonable option. In early 20s and certainly teens, it is a horrible idea because it is likely to significantly decrease your free androgens. So you will have less testosterone acting on receptors through the body. Are there any other micronutrients or macronutrients that people in their 20s and 30s should emphasize? We haven't really touched on fatty acids or fiber too much. Uh, fiber is going to be paramount in kind of like setting your set point of your gut microbiome the rest of your life. There is prebiotic fiber, which you could think of as fish food for your good gut microbiome. Your gut microbiome is kind of like an aquarium or a fish tank. Now I'm just thinking about goldfish swimming around in that... the goldfish eating people don't eat goldfish people thank yep. you live um, or dead yeah um, but any fiber or food that you're putting in your gut it's either going to it's going to skew your gut microbiome towards something that is more beneficial or, or more detrimental and would you say that the prebiotic fiber and the getting essential fatty acids uh, that would be important to do throughout the lifespan or just for the people in their 20s and 30s throughout the lifespan um, particularly important in the teenage 20s, 30s, because it helps with brain development. Um, you're certainly more of an expert than me when it comes to um, brain development, but it does continue to de develop th really throughout the lifespan, but certainly through the 20s and 30s as well. What about um, taking a multivitamin while you're growing up? So many people um, do that. Uh, is it necessary? Is it useful? And if it's not necessary, is it safe to do anyway? It's generally safe to do anyway. Um, I do not think everybody needs a multivitamin. The more exclusionary your diet is, for example, if you have uh, celiac disease or if you're planning on fertility soon, then perhaps it's more reasonable to take a multivitamin. In a previous discussion of ours, I asked you about um, caloric restriction and testosterone. And if I recall correctly, the idea was that if somebody is overweight, they have excess fat adipose tissue, then getting rid of some of that adipose tissue by, through caloric restriction and exercise, provided it's done not too fast in a healthy way, is going to be beneficial for testosterone in the long run. But that 
for individuals who are not carrying an excess of body fat, caloric restriction is actually going to lower testosterone. First of all, do I have that correct? And second, are there any um, addendums to that that you'd like to, to give us now? That's correct. Um, if you look at an individual in a caloric deficit, several changes will happen. One is that they'll have less building blocks for hormones. Another is that they will be in a catabolic state more often, so that balance of anabolism and cat catabolism will be different. They'll likely have less signaling from growth hormone and IGF-1, and they'll also have the high SHBG that we defined earlier as the binding protein, so their free androgens and free estrogens will go down. 